I am Jonathan Majors, and I play Rafe, Raphael. This script came to me uh, uh, pretty standard via my, uh, via my team, and uh, pretty new to, you know, I just graduated from school, so I wasn't really aware of how things kind of worked. And so uh, I got the script, and I was like, well, what? We put this on tape, and he was like, uh, the director wants to meet with you. So I'm like, cool. And so I uh, go and read the script uh, from my agent, and then I meet up with Rupert at a, uh, at a restaurant. And um, that's how the process began. I fell in love with the script. I thought, okay, this is, this is interesting, uh, primarily because uh, the characters, for one, that we are in a world in which um, everybody, uh, first off, you have two, you have a couple protagonists, um, they ebb and flow about who's who's in focus, who's not in focus, ultimately you realize that they're all kind of in, deeply interconnected uh, through family, um, uh, Wraith and Gay being brothers and Mulligan being the partner of our deceased father. Um, so I was amazed by that, 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 that trinity. That, that we're kind of following these three uh, storylines. A country, uh, the United States of America, is under occupation, which is something that we are probably one of the very uh, few countries that are fortunate enough to never be really under occupation, um, though we've occupied and currently occupy, uh, quote unquote, other countries. Um, and so we're in a vulnerable situation because we're being occupied by something uh, more powerful than us. And that is, uh, one, drama, and two, unheard of. How is that possible that America could be occupied? And we are, by these, uh, these other creatures, these aliens. Um, and they've come and they've taken over our government. And they've taken over, essentially, um, our way of life. Everything we know now, uh, Digital Watch is gone. Uh, smart cars gone. Smart anything gone. You know we're back to uh, Rafe has a line. You know we're going time going backwards. You know to the to the dark ages extinction, and we're slowly trickling back and back and back into like you know, the caveman ages. You know we're almost uh, we're almost done. Rafe is the older brother uh, to Gabriel, and um, our father and mother. Uh, were a police officer and a teacher, which is very cool. <laughs> you know that uh, uh, in Chicago, our parents were very domestic, social um, disciples of humanity. You know, they're police officers, so they're keeping us safe, and they're teachers, so they're educating us, right? Like that is as down home as you can possibly get. And during the occupation, uh, when it begins, our father begins to fight back. Our mother begins to fight back. The connection between uh, Gabriel and Rafe is that, and Mulligan, is that our father being a cop, his partner uh, is Mulligan, um, which we all know. You know, that's the whole family knows that. Um, but Rafe and Gabriel are young boys when this happens, and ultimately um, we, we become orphaned, and that's kind of where we, be, we begin the story. Rupert and Erica, uh, the writers of the of the show, uh, and Rupert being the director, uh, did a great job, I think, of laying out breadcrumbs um, on how they got to where they got. Now, how they picked up one breadcrumb to the next breadcrumb, they left, um, in some ways, open for the actor to interpret and to kind of build. In addition to taking our natural resources, uh, destroying our communication uh, uh, digitally, they've uh, essentially locked down our airwaves. So we cannot connect, um, we can't connect, which is, I, I think, one of the biggest themes in, in the film, especially for Rafe, the, the need to connect, the need to uh, hold on to and heal things. And without communication, he can't, he can't and we as a, as, a, as a society can't do that.
we are living in a place where there's so much surveillance. Um, we are being run by one power. It is their way. There is no communication between the people and the power. There is no communication between the people and the people. We are put in a situation where we simply exist and we're being watched. And so we can't exist the way we wish to exist. We can't gather. There's nothing that we can do that will, we can't connect. The jammer is such a, a, a metaphor and a, 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 a theme that we're jammed and we can't get to each other and we're not doing it to ourselves. There is something greater than us and not the greatest thing, but something greater than us stopping us from connecting and they're watching our every move. And I mean, Big Brother turned up to you know, 20 million, you know. You know, in the process of, of being fortunate enough to, you know, receive the role, earn the role, uh, we met pre-Trump administration <laughs> and post-Trump administration. And pre-Trump administration, we were just, um, we felt we felt that there was something looming, but the script was written way before this became a, a thing. You know, I think Rupert's been working, he's been working on the script for years, I know that. Um, he and Eric have been working on it for a very long time. So this is, the script was written during the Obama administration. You know, I think that's fair to say. Um, but now there's so, there's been so many um, correlations between the world that we're living in, in captive state, and the world that we actually dwell in now. There's a moment in the, uh, in the film where uh, myself, Anita, uh, and uh, Daniel are escaping Chicago and we have to walk through these scanners because only a certain group of people are authorized to travel. Now, we didn't know, I can't, I, I, I bet the bank on it that Rupert didn't know that we would be dealing with, you know, a, a Muslim uh, ban, quote unquote. Um, he w didn't know that the press would be locked out of the White House, you know, at certain times. He didn't, he, I'm, I'm certain he didn't know that, you know. Uh, there is no art in captive state. There is none. I mean, we, there's no references, there's nothing, you know, and we are in a position now where we might lose the National Endowment of the Arts. You know, PBS is like, you know, has its back against the wall. So we're in a state, no pun intended, uh, very similar to where we are now. One of the things I love about the film is that, and Rupert made a, a uh, conscious choice to state that we're in a world that is not, this is not Star Trek, this is not Star Wars, you know, we're in a world that looks just like every day, we're walking around, you know, we're hanging out, some of the cars hover, you know, <laughs> there's, a little, uh, there's a little uptick there, but we're in a very normal world, the day-to-day -day appears the same, and the only thing that's changed is the fact that there are implants in that certain things don't apply anymore. The way we used to be doesn't really apply anymore. And the only thing that's changed that is time. And so we are in the future. We are in a different world. It's a, a heightened sense of reality that we're dealing in. So we have Mulligan, who represents, I think, the government, the government branch, right? That's, he's a police officer. He's a special uh, branch police officer, uh, played by John Goodman, and he he occupies that sphere. Then we have uh, Gabriel, baby brother, who is our day to day uh, nine to five young man worker. You know he is he is the social branch. He he makes it through life day to day. And then we have Rafe, Raphael, who is completely off the grid, right? Who represents. Um, the resistance, right? So you have these two guys on opposite sides. You have the uh, the state, and then you have the people, and then here you have the resistance. And so we're all pulling and trying to make our way through. Cool part about the film is that as we struggle and struggle and struggle, we kind of realize we're all kind of going for the same thing. Uh, but because we're jammed up, because we can't communicate, you know, uh, we have a hard time. 
and and we lose life and we lose time and we lose uh, resources uh, because of that confusion. So Ashton and I met uh, maybe two weeks, no, maybe, yeah, maybe two and a half weeks ago from today because we were attempting to, um, you know, uh, for, for, the, for art's sake, you know, the experiment of what it is if we actually put these two young men together at the same time, myself and Ashton. And we, we were shooting for that and we were moving around each other and, and, and that was great. And then ultimately it became more important for the film that Jonathan and myself and Ashton got together, so we had dinner together, and it was just he and I, and we ate Italian, and it was uh, it was a moment of recognition in some ways, and also sniffing each other out, trying to figure out who who we are, you know, not just actors, but who we are as young men, who we are as young black men, who we are as actors, um, who we are as the characters that we're going to be playing. You know, there's a lot of trust that has to uh, transpire between us. There's a lot of history that has happened between us as characters. And so it, it was actually very easy, you know, after we kind of got into it with each other, just kind of like sit, breathe with each other. And, and uh, I recognized a lot of, uh, I recognized a lot of light in him that I, I am attracted to. It's kind of cliche to say like, you know, Chicago is a part of the film, but it absolutely is, you know. Um, if this if this movie was happening in you know Cleveland or <laughs> Cleveland in Cleveland or Los Angeles or any other place it would be, be very different you know um, there's something about being in the, being in a major city in the Midwest that is um, that is important to the film you know it, it it helps you know we're not on the coast there's no escape you know if you know, go to Japan if you're in LA go to go to, you know, try to get to London if you're in New York no you you are isolated in the middle of the country and you know, America's a huge, huge country. Jane Doe has uh, has been the one to to help, you know, keep keep everything afloat to the extent that she is the one that activates and educates and radicalizes young Rafe, and so she is his. Uh, uh, landline in many ways to uh, the resistance. Um, she is the encyclopedia, she is a dictionary, she is the GPS in which everything is kind of getting flowed to uh, Rafe in, in the hideout. As you find out in the film, they they have a very, it's, it's very much like Romeo and Juliet, they're at a party, he sees her, star-crossed lovers, <laughs> it ends up badly, you know. Uh, he sees her, uh, Mulligan's married, uh, but he has a connection with this woman. And they continue this friendship, which becomes uh, romantic in a way, um, and very heartbreaking because there's a barrier that they just can't uh, breach. You know, that Mulligan, with his integrity, with his um, you know understanding of life and his marriage, just can't go that far but because they can't do that the uh, intimacy is so clear and the connection is so uh, potent between the two of them when people see captive state I hope they walk away one you know thoroughly entertained you know I think what we've put together is a, a dramatic story that uh, that really, that, that, that it's really, gonna, it's really gonna get you going. You know, it, it's a thrill. You'll be thrilled when you watch it. You'll be rooting for these guys, and then I hope that it sticks with them long enough that they kind of realize, and I, and, I, and I hope they will, they realize how close we are, um, the givens that are happening in the film and where we are now, and to, you know, very fortunate to, I feel very fortunate to be working on this film because, to me, it's real art. And what real art is, is uh, specific, personal, and relevant. And because it's all of these things, I think the people that watch it, anyone, the audiences that see it, will find themselves in the film and connect to it and be able to take, you know, not the lessons, but 
of the experiences of these characters and glean from them a bit of understanding about themselves and about the situation we're in and make a change, you know, because uh, we need to fight back in some ways and we need to fight back hard and um, it's a must, it's a necessity if, if, we, if we don't want to go back to the dark ages, you know, extinction as, uh, as Rafe says.